Good morning. My name is Andrew Bridges with Photron USA and I'm here from the Photonics West Show booth 667 to tell you a little bit about our polarization cameras. Now, first of all, Photron uh, USA is a subsidiary of Photon Limited of Japan, uh, the world's largest manufacturer of high-speed cameras for slow motion analysis. But today, rather than talk about our conventional high-speed cameras, I wish to inform you about a novel way we have utilized this technology to see and measure a phenomena that was previously invisible to anything other than the most basic inspection systems. Now you probably know there are many technologies where high-speed cameras operating anywhere from 60 to several million frames per second uh, or pictures or images per second enable us to see and understand what is happening on the outside of an object. For example, PIV or particle image velocimetry lets us see and understand what is happening in a turbulent flow using tiny seed particles to visualize and measure the flow of either a, a, a fluid or a gas. Another way that we use our high-speed cameras is digital image correlation or DIC. And here we spray a random noise pattern onto the external surface of the material record it typically in 3D but also in 2D either high speed or at conventional video rates and then we're able to very accurately measure and understand the way that the physical surface of an object is actually displaced the stresses etc that are experienced inside but what happens when you want to see what is happening on the inside of a material now, we've all seen those amazing crazy patterns that you see on the, uh, the side windows of your car when you put on a pair of polarized sunglasses. These patterns are caused by residual stress that is left inside the glass during the manufacturing process. This may be through heating, uh, extrusion, molding or any other uh, processes that are used to produce these glass pieces. But this residual stress is an important factor that can affect the end performance of the product. Now this phenomenon is referred to as birefringent retardation in the material or fluid and we now have the means to quantify this retardation and from that derive the stress in the material either dynamically as it is being induced or the stress that is left, the residual stress that's left in the material after the production process has completed such as your car windows. The way that this works is that crystalline materials can be defined as either isotropic, which the light passes through the material uh, continuously unaffected, such as with glass. It doesn't matter of the optical axis or the angle that it enters the material. So glass is a good example of this. And I have an example here. So by refringence here we can see a typical sodium chloride versus calcite. And we can see here the way that the glass is affected. And finally, whoop, go back finally in the bottom slide we can actually see calcite which is what we call an anisotropic material now anisotropic material it means that it has a physical property that has a different value when measured in a different axis a good example of this is wood now wood has a grain and wood is much stronger with the grain than it is across it it's easy to break a piece of wood across the grain than it is to bend it or break it at the end so wood is an anisotropic material in opti optical materials such as calcite, light travels along two distinct paths within the material. These two paths are often referred to as the ordinary and the extraordinary rays, and they are dependent upon the polarization of the light entering the material. Now the difference between these two paths results in one ray coming through the material a little slower than the other. And this difference, typically measured in nanometers, is referred to as the birefringent retardation or double refraction. And there is a dis direct correlation between the retardation and the stress. If we go back to a, another slide, here we show basically the, uh, the understanding of the relationship. So birefraction is the optical property of the material having a refractive index that depends on the polarization and propagation direction of light. These optically anisotropic materials are said to be birefringent or birefractive. And the birefringence is often quantified as the maximum difference between the refractive indices exhibited by the material. Birefringence is often quantified as the maximum difference between the refractive indices exhibited by the material and the retardation values that can be determined by the phase difference of the X and the Y components show the internal stress within the sample being tested. 
being able to see this retardation or stress being generated in different materials and processes in high speed color provides engineers, scientists and manufacturers alike an amazing opportunity to better understand what factors impact the final quality and performance of the end products and understand how and where problems such as fractures might occur in the sample. Now there have long existed a number of systems that enable researchers to view some level of polarized representation of the subject. But these tend to be either a static view or a very slow speed scan system that utilizes a physically rotating polarizer wheel uh, or alternatively they may use a single point to, to measure we look here so we can see effectively a line scan system where a single point is measured as it scans across the system. Now with the system that we are representing, we're actually, again my videos aren't playing quite in the order they should. Nope, not going to work. Okay. With our system we're actually using a 2D sensor. In this case uh, the crystal we have here is basically a 1K by 1K sensor rather than a single point. So we're able to, to capture images in nanoseconds rather than minutes or hours. And further, better than that, we can also record hundreds or thousands or even millions of pictures per second. So if we have a very high speed event such as crack propagation in glass or a similar material, we can actually see the way the stress is distributed in that, uh, in that uh, material. So to achieve this, Photron has developed a special sensor, so we have our conventional CMOS sensor, in this case one megapixel, with our high-speed analog to digital converters coming over, and then we spot a, a micro polarizer array directly onto the CMOS sensor itself. If we look at that, and in a cluster of four pixels, and we can see the lower view there is an electron microscope view where each one of those squares is actually 20 micron square, we have the four different polarization angles. Uh, these are 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. Now it's important to appreciate that these pixels are actually as small as 10 microns square on our 5 megapixel camera, or 20 microns on the 1 megapixel high-speed system. And that's actually less than 400 millionths of an inch each. With these four polarization pixels or polarization cluster, when they're analyzed by Photron Stress Viewer software or MATLAB or similar, the retardation and polarization axes can actually be displayed to enable confirmation of the stress and the direction the stress is traveling within the, the sample. Now also it's very important to know that the original monochrome high-speed data is retained. So the CRISTA can operate as a high-speed camera, again recording in this example anywhere from 60 to 1.3 million frames per second and some of the samples will show some of the video applications will show you can see the high-speed video data being displayed alongside the uh, polarization view the, the retardation so the Christa's high-speed sensor is 1024 by 1024 pixels up to 7,000 frames per second and as with all high-speed cameras we can reduce the resolution to increase the frame rate in this case up to 1.3 million frames per second and as I mentioned earlier this can be regardless of the frame rate we can actually capture uh, exposure times down to the order of about 159 nanoseconds or the reciprocal of the frame rate so if you're operating at a 60 frames per second the maximum shutter time we can do obviously is 1 60th of a frame rate. But our application of this technology is not limited to only high-speed cameras. It can also be utilized in a number of other equally interesting manners. Uh, we've expanded this concept, concept to provide real-time inspection and feedback for the production line of polymers, uh, glass used in flat screen televisions, phones, camera lenses, and tablets and solar panels to name just a few. By utilizing a polarization camera, in this case rather than being a square sensor, we're actually using just a line of one or two pixels across the width. So uh, we can do a, a, I think 2056 by two pixels and if we build up a, a line of these cameras up to eight, we can actually cover a production web eight, uh, five meters wide to cover the entire process and give real-time feedback to the operator so they can see if there are um, 
problems being induced either by temperature, by roller pinch or by the extrusion process and so they can adjust the whole process to ensure that they get the maximum possible yield from across this five meter web and across the several kilometers that the actual uh, polymer can be saved. It can also be used as a highly accurate scan system. We have two systems on our booth here at Photonics West, both the high speed, the Krista system, and we also have what we call our Kamakiri system, which is a, a more precise three wavelength inspection system that enables us to very accurately measure very small differences in the retardation that are left from a production process, such as maybe a, a tablet, glass screen, or any other applications. Now, off, the obvious question here is, how is this helpful? Where is this applicable to me? Well, some examples where polarization inspection systems are used to experience in everyday life uh, may be such as uh, affecting the viewing angle that you're able to achieve from your flat screen TV or any other monitor. As I stand here, I can still see information on my display here. And if we had very bad retardation there, we would find that that angle would narrow very significantly. And also the contrast ratio, moving from the black to the white, uh, basically, and the colors gives us a lot more information because we're able to control the quality of this production. Another area, as I mentioned earlier, is in your vehicle uh, glass. Um, for example, windshield. It's very important, obviously, that there's not any high residual stress left inside the windshield when it's produced, such as if it hits a stone chip, you don't want it breaking into a thousand and one different little pieces and falling in your lap as they used to. I'm showing my age here. Whereas these days, obviously, because they are laminated, they're much better. But again, the image, the actual quality of the windshield will directly relate to its performance as you're driving along at 120 miles per hour uh, and you get a stone chip there. And defects in the crystal structure of uh, semiconductors such as silicon carbide or gallium nitride, they effectively, they can affect the performance of the components such as a blue LED. And if there are these defects, they can actually directly result in failure of the component and possible fire. So by viewing the retardation in these and many more cases, these issues can be viewed and controlled and using the patented polarization technique developed by Photron and our partners at Photonic Lattice, the final product improved. If I come back to our slides, hopefully we have a couple of examples. So this is where we use our Krista as part of a FISU interferometer. And here we're able to actually visualize sound waves. Both of these recordings were made at 40,000 frames per second. The top one shows a loudspeaker emanating sound and the bottom one shows the same thing, but we've actually got a, a plate in the way and we're reflecting, a, uh, it's actually reflecting the sound back there. So the high speed 2D polarization camera can become a very critical component of an interferometer. A couple of examples here, we have a, a tensile test of optical film recorded at 250 frames per second. On the left again, we can see our high speed video and on the right hand side, we can see the polarization view and we can see what we refer to as necking of the product around here. So effectively as the stress is reduced, but we actually see the break occurring much higher up there. But again, this enables operators to see and understand what is happening inside a transparent or a semi-transparent material or film. Here we're looking at what we call an indent test of glass. I believe this is recorded at 100,000 frames a second, where the glass is slowly pressured, and then we can see the stress actually being distribution. Again, distributed within the material. Again, we have the conventional high-speed view, and then we superimpose the polarization image of the same thing across there and again you can see the way that the, the distribution reflected as blue being very low and red being high in that, uh, maybe 120 nanometers is passed through the material there. Rheology is a, an important area to us where we're looking at the uh, what we call non-Newtonian fluids. So these are basically fluids that the shear um, the, the properties of the fluid are directly affected by fa uh, factors such as stress. So here we have a, a macro uh, molecular flow, a very long video which I should have edited but it hopefully it'll start again in a moment. And we can actually see the way that the stress is distributed as this fluid, this non-Newtonian fluid is forced through this narrow pipe into a larger chamber. Lastly we have a, a video showing ultrasonic 
it's vibration assisted machining. In the top video, we can see that there is a lot less stress induced into the material as the cutting process. And this is because the actual material is being vibrated at a very high speed. So we're able to reduce the amount of stress that is put into the material. This can be very important for things such as cell phone uh, glass, where effectively, if you're cutting the edge of it, you don't want to induce these micro fractures or any other stress that could actually uh, cause failures in the product further down the line. And that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, once again, my name is Andrew Bridges. I'm with Photron USA. We're located in San Diego and are responsible for uh, uh, the covering, obviously, the Americas and a few other territories. We have a sister company in Europe, which covers us there in Asia, and our head office is in Tokyo, Japan. If you have any questions, my details are here. Please do not hesitate to either give me a call or to send us an email or check out our website. Once again, this is Andrew Bridges with Photron USA reporting live from Photonics West, booth 667. Thank you very much for your time.